Welcome this morning. I'm Pastor Darrow, and good to um, have you all to join us uh, this morning at Pine Grove Church. We're just excited about the Lord, excited about what God is doing uh, in the life of the church, even in the midst of these difficult days. Isn't it good to note that God is unchanging? That in the midst of uncertainty and doubts and fears that God is unchanging? Amen. We can depend on him, can't we? He is the same today as it was on yesterday. And he'll be this very same tomorrow. And that is something to shout about this morning. We thank God for each of you. We thank God for Pastor CJ and uh, Minister Tammy, Minister Tanya, Minister Leandra, uh, all of our spouses. Uh, thank God for Lady Vaughn. You all keep her prayed up this morning. The family is going through a lot. So you all keep them prayed up uh, before the Father's throne. Amen. But God is an able God, amen. God is an able God, an able God. We would like to say happy Valentine's Day to, uh, to all of you. I want you to know that you are loved by God this morning. You are loved with an everlasting love this morning. It doesn't matter who doesn't love you, God loves you. Amen, amen. And you can rejoice over that today. I would like uh, to call your attention uh, this morning to uh, the book of Hosea, Old Testament uh, book, uh, the first recorded uh, of the minor prophets, may not have been the first uh, chronologically, but he was the first recorded in the, uh, in the canon. And a minor prophet, not because uh, the word was uh, important, but because a small book relative to some of the larger books. This text in Hosea is one that is familiar to many, if not most of you. But I think that it is befitting uh, for a time such as this. Hosea, beginning uh, with Chapter one, beginning at verse number one. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, the son of uh, Berai, in the land, in the days of Uzziah, or Uzziah, some say, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. When the Lord first spoke, to Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, go take to yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Debaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then we will call your attention to the third chapter of the same book, beginning at verse number one. And the Lord said to me, go again, love a woman who is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Even as the Lord loves the children of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love cakes of raisins. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and a homer and a, and a lethal of barley. And I said to her, you must dwell as mine for many days. You shall not play the whore or belong to another man. So will I also be to you. For the children of Israel shall dwell many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or pillar, without ephod or household gods. Afterwards, the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and they shall come in fear to the Lord and to his goodness in the latter days. And the people said, amen. For thought this, this morning, there's a Gomer in all of us. Yes, there's a Gomer in all of us. Let's pray. 
Father, we thank you now for this day that thou hast made. In spite of all, because of it all, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. We thank you for sustaining grace. We thank you for being the God of our fathers and the God of our fathers' fathers. We thank you, God, for the faith that they have passed down to us. Reminding us that you are an able God, that you are a trustworthy God, that you are an unfailing God, that you are a saving God. So, Father, we thank you for, for allowing us to know you, for allowing us to be called your children. Master, we're weak. For you are so mighty. We present before you the needs of your people, the needs of this church family, the needs of the church, the needs of this nation, the needs of the world, God. We present them before you. We lay them at your feet. Confident, God, that is not too much for you. Divine healer. Mighty way maker. Move now, Lord, in this sacred space. Speak to our hearts. Give us a word, God, that is meet for this season. We'll be careful. We lift up our eyes to you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We ask it in the mighty and the wonderful, the most magnificent name of your precious Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. Amen and amen. There's a Goma mm, in all of us. As this text unfolds this morning, we hear the word of the Lord as it presents itself to the prophet Hosea. Hosea was preaching to, to Israel at a time when Idolatry was rampant. The people that were handpicked, hand chosen by God to be his people have gone after other gods. Despite him warning them before they ever went to Canaan, before they ever crossed over into the promised land, he warned them not to go after the other gods, the gods of the Canaanites. He even reminded them to put the little blue cloth on the end of that tassel as a reminder that they should not play the part of a harlot. But as this text unfolds today, God's people are guilty of chasing after other gods. The Assyrians were preparing to, to take them captive. So Hosea comes with a message of doom, and yet it is a message that is sprinkled with hope. A message of destruction, and yet a message overlaid with life. God says to 
to Hosea. In the days of Uzziah and Jotham and Ahaz and Hezekiah, all those kings of Jer in those days, go take to yourself a wife. A wife of whoredom. That's a crazy commandment. Pastor CJ, that, that, that doesn't make sense. Hosea is the prophet, he is the preacher. But God says to the preacher, Go and take for your wife a loose woman, a woman of prostitution, a woman of holotry, or a woman of whoredom. Everybody knows that in the preacher's manual on page number one, the manual says that a preacher should not choose for a wife a woman who likes to stay out all night on Saturday night. Everybody knows that there will be a distraction to the preacher when he's preparing his Sunday message. Everybody knows that the preacher doesn't need to choose for a wife, a woman who is loud, who, who is boisterous, who, who's a brawler, who, no, no, that's not a good fit for, for a wife, not for the preacher, for the prophet. Preacher, don't choose for your wife, the woman who, wears the shortest skirt in the church and then sits on the front row. No, no, that, that's not a good fit for the, for the preacher. But yet God says to Hosea, go and take for your wife, a woman by the name of Goma. Her very name means completion in the sense that she was the complete epitome of idolatry there in Israel. She was the complete epitome of whoredomness, of sinful living. And God calls on Hosea to claim her as his wife. It's hard sometimes to understand the will, the ways of God. Sometimes God will call upon us to do some difficult things. Believers, maybe you like me have made a vow to the Lord. God, if you send me, I'll go where you ask me to go. And I'll say what you tell me to say and I'll do what you have me to do. That's easy to say, isn't it, on down on our knees? But sometimes when God asks us to do those difficult things, we find ourselves wanting to go in the opposite direction. But the Bible says that Hosea obeyed. God says to Hosea that I want you to, to experience the pain that, that I am experiencing. I want you to know, Hosea, what it feels like to, to, to have the one that you love be in love with another. More than any other prophet, Hosea would have to live out his prophecy, live out his prophetic message. But I can imagine that Hosea could understand the heart of God so much better. Living out the order of God. The Bible says that he, he went into Goma, the daughter of the Blaine. 
man whose name means something like double grapes or something like that. I'm told that it, it is symbolic of excess sexuality. No wonder his, his daughter was in the place where she was. Hosea goes and he, he calls Gomer to be his wife. Scholars and preachers have a problem with that. They, they distress over how God could do that. And they, they assume that it was more plausible more likely that when, when Hosea married Goma, she was an upstanding, outstanding woman and that somewhere along the way she became a prostitute. But now that's not what the Bible says. The Bible said God told him to go and marry a woman of order. And I will take God's word for, for what it is. Maybe, maybe, maybe in the, in the early days of that relationship, Maybe Gomer did all right. Maybe, maybe she was faithful for a while. Maybe for a while she, she played nicely the, the role of the prophet's wife. <laughs> imagine, imagine the talk of the town because everybody would have known basically Hosea, the prophet of God. Hey, 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 have you heard who Hosea married? Yeah, have you heard who he married? Of all the women that he could have picked, have you heard who he chose? My, 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 I don't know what he was thinking. He must have been drunk when he did that. And yet, there they are. Hosea and Goma. They would have a child, a son. And the Bible said, call his name Jezreel. For in just a little while, I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, for the atrocities that they committed against this house. In just a little while, I'll put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. She conceived again and she had a daughter and the Lord said, call her name, no mercy. For I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel to forgive them at all. Then she was pregnant again and she had a, another son. And the Bible says, call that boy, not my people. For God said, you are not my people. It is believed that, that, that maybe the second and the third child weren't even Hosea's children. By now, Gomer had begun to resort to her old life. Tipping out in the midday. Tipping out after dark. Perhaps while he was asleep, tipping out, going, eventually she wasn't tipping out, she was just walking out. And eventually she wasn't even coming home. Imagine that. A woman who had been taken off the streets, had been given a nice home, had been Provided with the things that she was working to purchase for herself. Food, shelter, a man to, to care for her. But that wasn't enough. There are those who, who believe that Hosea or Mary Goma is just out of obligation, out of duty, because God said, go and marry her. But no, 
That doesn't fit the story. This story of Jose and Gomer is a manifestation or an analogy of God's love for Israel. Therefore, Jose would have had to love Gomer in order for him to feel the pain that God felt he had to love her. Maybe, maybe, maybe some of you can, can relate to, to the plight of Hosea. He has chosen to love this woman. He has poured all that he has into her and their relationship. And his love is not being reciprocated. That's hard, isn't it? It's easy, it's easy, it's easy to love someone when they are giving it back to you. That, that's easy love, that's easy love. But it's hard to, to be loving and to love and to love and to give and to love and to love when they don't give you anything back. Have you ever been there? I know some, somebody here has been, has been in that place. Trying to make the marriage work and they don't want to make it work. Working hard, bringing home your paycheck, paying the bills, and they go and take their $500, whatever it is, and um, they get it $500 on Friday, and by Saturday or Sunday, they're already broke. Maybe they gave you $50, and the other full 50 they blew down at the local club someplace. Blew it on weed or alcohol, whatever it is they're blowing it on. Somebody can relate to that. Loving somebody and treating them kind and with gentleness and just loving on them and they in return give you abuse, verbal and physical and meanness. That's a hard love, isn't it? Brother Teddy back in the late 70s said, so good, so good. Loving somebody when somebody loves you back. But it's not so easy. Loving someone when they don't appreciate and don't reciprocate the love that you give them. Somebody caught up in that same situation today. Trying to make it work, trying to stay there because you made a vow and, and your love is not being appreciated. It's hard. In chapter 2, Hosea will say basically that you're not my wife. I've had enough. I give up. I'm tired. I'm sick and I'm tired. I can't take it anymore. I'm tired. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Emotionally out, physically out, I'm out. <laughs> Hosea's wife, Goma, has been unfaithful, disgraceful. She has said in chapter 2, verse 5, I will go after my lovers who give me my food and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. I'm going after my lovers now. I could see if Hosea had not been giving her all those things. I could see if Hosea had not been kind and gentle and loving. But it doesn't make sense to leave a good thing to go after that thing. And you agree with me this morning, I said, oh, that old low down Goma, that old no good Goma. But if we are honest with ourselves, there's a Goma in all of us. All of us. There's something in all of us that even though we have everything we need, we, we have wondering eyes. 
something in us, in our nature, that even though we are not lacking, we are still desiring something over on the other side. There's a sin nature. God has given to us everything we need. Everything we need. Everything we need. He gave Adam and Eve everything they needed in the garden. He said everything here is good to eat. Just don't eat of the forbidden tree. They weren't hungry, they had plenty to eat. They did not need it, but desire. The evil one. God rescues us from wherever we are. He loves on us, he blesses us, he, he everything our hand touches, he, he bless. And after a while, we find ourselves tipping out on him. After a while, on Sunday morning, we find ourselves just lounging around. After a while, we find ourselves going to the ball game. After a while, we find ourselves going to work that we don't even, when we don't even have to go to work. After a while, we just don't even make an excuse. We just stay in the bed and sleep. After a while, we, we stop reading the Bible. After a while, we stop praying. After a while, we stop singing. After a while, we're singing other songs. After a while, we're reading other stuff. We're looking at other movies. After a while, we have found ourselves chasing after another love. Yeah, yeah. That is the Goma in us, isn't it? Let's face it. Even those of us who have saved, if we do not keep our guard up, the enemy will have us walking back down the road that we once left. Paul said it, the good I would do, I don't do, and the evil that I don't want to do, I find myself doing because there is a law. That when I would do right, evil is always at hand. That is our sin nature. It pulls us back to another year, another place, a prior place. It pulls us back down that road that we said we would never go again. That's what sin does. We have to continue to crucify the flesh daily. Yes, the story of Hosea and Goma is a story of sin, a story of betrayal. But it's really a story of repentance, redemption, and restoration. The first four chapters of this book we lay out the story of Hosea and Gomer and talks about their marriage, but from chapter four through 14, it, it, it talks about the restoration of Israel, how God will restore them back to their proper place. But within those chapters, there are several cycles of repentance and restoration and repentance and restoration and repentance and restoration. And I'm so glad this morning that God is a forgiving and a merciful God who gives us new mercies every day as Lady Vaughn has said. Every day he gives us new mercies. A lot of us like Goma have gone astray. Even though we say, Lord, if you save me, I'll serve you till I die. We find ourselves prone to wonder. God could have left Hosea in that place as a single parent, 
single father with three children, a lonely man. Could have left Gomer out there in the streets. In her waywardness. But in chapter number three, God says to Hosea, go again. <laughs> God sometimes calls on us to do the hard thing. Go again. But God, I already did, and they didn't appreciate me. Go again. God, I tried to reconcile, but they go again. God, you know, I've tried to make it work. Go again. God, they are unlovable. Go again. You know, some people are hard to love because they don't know what it is to be loved. I'm told that parents who adopt children out of abusive situations have to be willing to take the time to, to cultivate a, a relationship of love. One would think that that child would just run to them and throw their arms around them and be so happy that somebody loves them. But for the child who doesn't really know what it is to be loved, it takes a while. They have to understand, they have to learn that, that your love is not attached to baggage. That it has no strings. That they love even when they do wrong. They have to learn that you're going to love them tomorrow just like you love them today. They have to learn that there's nothing that they can do that will keep you from loving them. They have to learn. They have to learn that you won't abandon them like, like others have abandoned them. They have to learn. And so those parents have to just show it again. And again, and again. And today, God is calling on somebody listening to me to show it again, and again, and again, and again. But God, I'm tired, and again. And the Lord said to me, go again, love a woman who is loved by another man. God, wait, 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 you're asking too much. Go and love a woman who is an adulteress. Go, go and love her. Even as the Lord loves the children of Israel. Though they turn to other gods and, and they love cakes of raisin and they, they're worshiping Baal, the Canaanite god. They're worshiping Baal. Baal, the son of El, the chief god in Ashwa. That fertility god. You won't mean it. In my mind's eye, I, I, I can see Hosea being obedient. He begins his, his search. He's looking here and there, to and fro. He goes over to, to, the, to the red light district, to, you know, over there where the night walkers are. I remember when Yvonne and I lived in, in Nashville. We, we, we lived there somewhere on the north side of town on Dixon Road. And, and right up from our mobile home park, as we would come home, we would see at nighttime, sometime in the daytime, the ladies walking the streets. Sometimes leaning over in the cars. If you dare look at them, they would want to wave you down. I could see Hosea looking, looking, looking for, for Gomer. Hey, 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 have you seen my wife? Imagine the embarrassment of Hosea. Imagine his shame. 
Have you seen my wife? I don't believe he had to say she five foot six and, and dark hair and brown eyes because I think that everybody would, would, would know who she was because they knew him and they would have known who his wife was. Have you seen her? But the love of God compelled Hosea to go after Gomer because the love of God compels us to go after those who God wants to love on. He searches. The Bible doesn't tell us how long it took him to find her. How many miles he walked. How many doors he knocked on. How many places he looked in. The Bible doesn't tell us. But I think he had to put forth the effort. And he finally finds her. But Vaughn, when he, when he finds her, she's not lying up in some palace or in some fancy home. No, no, no servants to do her bid. She's not wearing purple and luxurious clothing. Not wearing any Gucci. Versace, Louis Vuitton. No, but she is standing on an auction block. Standing on an auction block. Being sold as a common slave. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But I imagine that Hosea began to push his way up toward the front. Everybody got quiet began to look at him as he approached the auction block. Maybe, maybe Hosea said, wait, 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 that, that's my woman, that, that's my wife. I don't know. If he did, the old auctioneer didn't care because he only cared about the money. So, oh, man. She may be yours, but she's a slave now. And if you want her, then you got to bid for her like everybody else. I don't know if they were bidding or if it was just a one price. I don't know. But the Bible says that he bought her. He bought her off the auction block of slavery. That's crazy to me. He had to pay for something that was already his. Isn't that crazy? He has to redeem something that is already his. He bought her for 15 shekels of silver and a homer and a half of barley. I'm told that the price of a common slave is 30 pieces of silver. She was half price in terms of the silver, half price in terms of the cost of a slave. The rest you can make up with barley. Some scholars say that the silver and the barley together were equal to 30 pieces. I don't know. But all that I know is that he went down into his pouch. He wasn't wealthy. He didn't have a whole lot. He pulled out the 15 pieces of silver. He gave the Homer and the lecture of barley. Others said a Homer and a half. He catches her by the hand. He leaves her off the auction block. And as they walk back toward the house, people and everybody looking at her. You know, folks gonna look at you when you change. When God comes and redeem you, folks gonna look at you funny. Some folks gonna talk about you behind your back, call you all kind of funny names. 
But I don't think Hosea minded. I heard him as he said to her, you must dwell as mine for many days. You shall not play the whore again. You shall not belong to another man again. You will be mine, but I also will be yours. You and me together. The Bible says that's how it's going to be with God and Israel. For a while, there won't be a king. There won't be a prince. There won't be any sacrifice going on because the Assyrians are coming. They're coming. They're coming. Captivity is coming. But when that is over, when the warfare has passed, when the wrath of God has passed, after that, when the storm is over, when God has made you suffer for a while, He's going to restore you. Afterwards, the children of Israel shall return, and then they'll be happy to seek the Lord. They will turn back to the Lord, their God, the one that they belong to, the one who said, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and the world, and they that dwell therein, they'll return back to the one who you belong to. They will seek the Lord their God and David their king. Well, what David are you talking about? Well, God had promised David that a king would sit upon his throne, that he would have descendants upon his throne. And I'm told that. In the city of David, a king was born. In the city of David, a king was born. And that king, one Friday, some 750 years after Hosea and Goma, one Friday, the son of David. The root of Jesse. Allowed them to march him through an unjust court. He allowed them to, to march him down the Villa Tallarosa. Out of the city gate to a place they call the place of the school. And there, on that hill, so far away, he allowed them to put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. He was there because somebody had betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver because of a common slave. You know he was there because he took Gomer's place. He was there because he took Hosea's place. He was there because he took Daryl's place and Yvonne's place. He took your place. He was there because he took Tammy's place and CJ's place and LaDonna's place. He was there because he took all of our places. Because the sin debt had to be paid. And the love of God was so great that the love of God reached out and reached down to the very recesses of this old human existence. And he saved us. Saved us. As he died on Calvary, as the blood came streaming down at Calvary, he said, whosoever will, let him come. He died to show us that he loves us. He knew that we all are Gomers. He knew that we all have gone astray, that we all have gone after other loves. But he wanted us to understand that he still loves us still. 
that there's nothing that we can do that will make him stop loving us. No prison history can make him stop loving us. No prostitution history can make him stop loving us. It doesn't matter right now if you're sleeping around, if you're living in sin, it doesn't matter. Oh, you can't, he, he'll still love us. You can't make him stop loving. It doesn't matter if you're addicted to drugs, you can't make him stop loving you. Even if you don't love yourself, you can't make him stop loving you. He could have come down, but he stayed there. Love kept him there. The love for man kept him there. He knew that we all like sheep have gone astray. Every single one of us. He knew that we deserve to die. He knew all of that. He knew every secret of our hearts, every secret of our lives. He knew all of that, and yet he stayed there on that cross. The songwriter was right when he said, I had a debt I could not pay. He paid a debt he didn't know. And there on Calvary, I heard him declare, paid in full, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. And he died. They buried him, but of course he didn't stay dead. And now he has ascended. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and for me every day of our lives. Because he knows that we're gomers. He knows that there's a goma in every single one of us. And yet he keeps on drawing us back to himself. Again and again. And again, and again. Maybe, maybe you're listening to me today. You feel unworthy. You feel that God could not possibly love you. I got good news for you, he does. Maybe, once upon a time, you made a confession and you, you got on that path of backsliding and you, you wandered far, far away from, from what you knew to be true. Maybe it's been a long time since you called on God. I invite you to call him right now. He loves the backslider. The Bible says he is married to the backslider. He wants you to come home. Maybe you, you've never made a confession. It's not too late. Make it right now. Say, so, Lord, I believe you. I believe that you love me even if I don't feel it. I believe that you love me. I believe that you died for me. And God, I surrender myself to you. If you do that right now, the Bible says you'll be saved. If you receive him as your savior, surrender to him and walk in his ways. One of our preachers will be happy to talk to you, to counsel with you, to walk with you. But I got good news today. That even though there's a Goma in all of us, the love of God is greater. He'll come and find you. He'll buy you back. He'll restore you to your proper place as child of God. 
May God bless his holy word.